Hello, learners. I have come to you today to make the discussion on a very beautiful poem of John Keats, and it is Otto Nightingale. Otto Nightingale is one of the major five poems of John Keats, which promoted John Keats to be a stalwart literary figure in English literature. And in this connection, I'd like to mention these five major poems. These are Otto Nightingale, Ode on Grecian Urn, Ode to Autumn, Ode on Psyche, and Ode on Melancholy. And, dear learners, you know that each and every literary piece has got a certain kind of background. Either it might be epic, it might be the novel, it might be the fiction, or poetry, or anything it is. It might have some background. Background is very important to be discussed and to be learned by the learners because background usually helps usually helps the learners to make a very easy comprehension of the particular topic. Today, to discuss on this beautiful poem, or to a nightingale, I would like to discuss the background of this poem. You know that a case had so many fans and friends. One of his friends was Brown. Mr. Brown, he was not Fanny Brown. Fanny Brown was his friend, it was his beloved, but Brown was his friend. Brown was living in Hampstead, one of the beautiful place of, in places of England, and one morning, Case received a letter. It was an invitation letter from his friend Brown. He, uh, Brown invited John Case to stay some days in Hampstead, which was a very beautiful place. And not only that, the weather condition during the time was going on in Hampstead was very well, which might be conducive for the health of health and mind of John Cates. Learn this, I have mentioned you earlier that John Cates was affected by tuberculosis. After his being affected by tuberculosis, his mind and body were, uh, uh, were not well, and that is why Kiss needed a change, and Kiss responded cordially to the invitation of his friend, and he decided to go there. Accordingly, John Kiss went to Hampstead, and actually, the weather condition, as John Kiss saw there, was very fine, and Kiss was was passing the days very comfortably there, and the weather condition was creating a very, very good relief, particularly in the mind and the physical child kids. <coughs> kids finding the beautiful weather, atmosphere, and conducive environment for himself, he decided to compose some poems, some lyrics there. And accordingly, one fine morning, Brown found that John Kitts took a chair from the breakfast table and he sat it under a plum tree beside the house. And sitting on the chair, John Kitts started watching the different branches of the tree. And in one of the branches, he found a nightingale which was singing and was creating the nest. The two things attracted John Kitts very much. One is the beautiful singing of the nightingale, and another is the beauty of the bird. The nightingale was singing with full throat, and it seemed to the point that it was welcoming the spring, because it was the time of coming spring to England. And John Chris, according to Brown, stayed there for two or three hours. When he returned home, Brown found some scraps of paper in his hand, and in the scraps of paper, Brown found a beautiful poem, beautiful poem containing the emotion of the poet which he received from the singing of the nightingale as well as the beauty of the art. Uh, dear learners, this is the short background of the poem Ode to a Nightingale. And another thing is that, uh, now I'd like to tell you one thing, that why the poet has written this beautiful lyric, beautiful poem, Ode to a Nightingale. There is a purpose behind this. You know that after being affected by tuberculosis, uh, 
Case was not sound particularly physically and mentally because his practical world uh, it was full of sorrow, suffering, disappointments and despairs. And that is why he was intelligent and sharp enough as a poet his sensitive his sensitivity his imagination was stronger than any other common man and that is why he decided to create another world that is the imaginative world and the nightingale helped him to create an imaginative world <coughs> and he, uh, learners if you read this poem or to a nightingale you will find the whole poem is a long journey of John Keats in the world of imagination. You know, the practical world or the world of imagination of John Keats was full of sorrow, suffering, disappointment and despair. And that is why the poet wanted to visit frequently the world of imagination. The world of imagination is quite different from the world of reality. And in the world of imagination, everything is beautiful, there is full of excitement, pleasure and merrymaking. And that is why in order to enjoy the life of John Cates, he decided to visit very frequently the world of imagination. Now, what is exactly the chariot or the how the Poet can exactly make the communication between the world of imagination and the world of reality. Poet belonged to the world of reality and the poet imagined it quietly. The bird nightingale belongs to the world of imagination and that is why on the part of the nightingale it was possible to produce a very very beautiful singing, beautiful singing and not only that to create beautiful symphony and melodious uh, melodious tune and the poet, st poet started it enjoy this but the fact is that it was really tough for the common man to maintain a certain kind of communication between the world of imagination and the world of reality the uh, the poet could dig it because all poets are something different from the common people the imagination and the feeling of the poets are quite different from the common people the poets feeling are sharper and that is why they could create imaginative world very promptly and kids did it and how at the very beginning you will find in the poem that case exactly decided to take a certain kind of resort and that is why elaboration by dint of which the poet can, uh, can make the journey from the world of reality to the world of imagination that is very important but later on the poet could feel that it is his it is not his occupation exactly to depend on wine or any sort of inebriation to make the journey, particularly in the world of imagination. And that is why, that is why he was found resorted in poetry. Poetry is a very important thing for any sort of imaginative man, and especially a man like John Keats, the, uh, how he could exactly make the communication between the world of reality and the world of imagination. And that is why in the uh, poem we say that the poet has a frequent visit in the world of imagination and he has been resorted finally, poetry. Poetry helps him to create a certain kind of state of mind to make a journey in the world of imagination. The nightingale has become a very, very important component which has created certain kind of sense in the mind of John Cates exactly to help him to, the go, to go to the world of imagination. Very interesting thing is that historically recorded that he had written this poem in Hampstead in his friend's house under a plum tree. But thing is that in the poem he has eliminated his imagination he has laminated his imagination particularly on the beautiful plot which is totally apart from the plot of Hampstead. Here the poet says that he is crossing a particular passage way from his friend's house and suddenly he has seen a beautiful, uh, he has seen a beautiful place full of 
beach and green, full of vegetation and shadows, where John Cates exactly saw a tree, where in a small branch of tree, a nightingale was singing, and it was a lighted bird, very beautiful one, which excited John Cates' imagination very much. And this imagination has enabled him to create a long lyric, a long lyric that is beautiful poem, Otto Nightingale. Otto Nightingale is a very, very important poem of John Keats, which has been widely read by the fans of John Keats, by the readers, and those people who have got the special interest in English literature. Let us, I think that you have got a certain kind of understanding, particularly uh, about the beautiful poem, Otto Nightingale. The background, I think, that has helped you exactly and to make me interested to make a journey particularly on this poem. And I, it is my advice to you, you have enough time in the pandemic COVID-19, you have not, you are not in a position to go to your college or university. So you have enough time to study it. If you study this poem, I think that you will get a special interest and which will provoke you to make a further journey, a further study in any of the poems of John Kate, John Kate's. And in the, in, the, in, the, in the eventual stage of uh, any session or any delivery, I'd like to speak something about the world condition. You know that COVID-19 is still being continued and there is no reduction particularly of these monsters, COVID-19 which is exactly creating a certain kind of paralyzing situation. And not only this, people are in, in a position of arrest. They are not uh, free exactly in their moment. And still, uh, in, despite that, we are the workers of education. We are the teachers. We are continuing our learning process to maintain a certain kind of bridge between our learners and the teachers. And this will be going on so long. The COVID-19 will be continued. I'd like to give a special thanks to our Honorable Principal, Mr. Sir Zafar Ali, and uh, my other colleagues who are exactly very much cooperative, exactly to continue this process of learning in this COVID-19 situation. We are trying our level best to overcome this sort of arresting situation. Till then, Allah Hafiz, next week, I'll tell you with another topic.